Hey guys, this is Coach Peter. Coach Teresa. Welcome to another episode of the Leaner Stronger podcast. In today's episode, we will be covering why fast and aggressive mini cuts suck for your long term results. In other words, we're going to cover how to look your absolute best on your European summer holiday or on your Balinese winter getaway without setting yourself up for failure when it comes to your long-term success with your body composition. I think that's where we should start. What's the problem with losing body fat too quickly? Is it a problem? What's the problem? And why is it not a good idea? Mm, I think, you know, we've been told this again and again and again, um, longer term. And we've said it. And we've said it again <laughs> and again and again. So, yeah, let's kind of pull it apart a little bit here so we get a bit of an idea of, okay, what is actually it? at stake here? What is the big deal? Yeah. So trying to lose significant amounts of body fat to uncover that lean and athletic and toned physique that's going to look great on photos. It's going to look great on the beach. You're going to feel fantastic. What's the problem with losing body fat too aggressively? And I think that a great way to answer this question is to actually understand how professional physique competitors, bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders, how do they use aggressive cutting? Because it's actually mini cuts is a is a concept and it's a term that is used to believe it or not, but to accentuate weight gain. Well, what the how does losing body fat aggressively How does that actually increase weight gain? Well, here's how it works. Professional physical competitors invest long durations of time and they devote that long duration of time specifically for the goal of building muscle mass because building muscle mass is really hard and it takes a lot of effort and you have to put your body through prolonged periods of eating in a calorie surplus, meaning that you're giving your body more calories than what you're expending through your total daily energy expenditure. And when you do that, your body weight will increase and you're going to be putting on muscle mass as long as you're also training hard because everyone knows what happens if you if you eat a lot of calories without training hard, you just get fat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like these guys are kind of really over having to push themselves in terms of fitting in a lot of calories. Like, so they've kind of desensitized their their hunger signals, I guess, to a degree. 100%. So yeah. what will happen is that, you know, to build muscle mass over time, you need to progressively do more in the gym, but also... To build muscle mass and add mass to your body, you need to progressively eat more and more and more. And you actually end up getting to a point where you're now eating so much food and you're training so hard. But because when you subject your body to a specific stimulus for a really long time, your body becomes less sensitive to it. So your body becomes used to building muscle mass or the stress of building muscle mass and and gaining weight so it becomes less effective the longer you do it so that's why you get good progress in the beginning but the longer you've been on your gaining phase like let's say after 12 or 16 weeks now your rate of progress has slowed down so much even though you're training much much harder and you're eating much much more than you were in the beginning of your gaining phase. Turns out that bodybuilders and physique competitors in that instance, they will use a mini cut, which is a period of two to six weeks of aggressive dieting so that they their body sensitizes to the stimulus of muscle growth and of weight gain once more. Mm. So why is this important for kind of everybody who's listening 
to know like why why then wouldn't it be advantageous for us to want to invest our time into a really aggressive mini cut yeah so in other words like how do most people approach okay i have my holiday in in six to eight weeks or even less than that what did you say your your client yeah yeah they want to get yeah they want to get leaner and look different within three weeks within three weeks i want to change my body in three weeks so i'm gonna go into an aggressive calorie deficit it turns out that you're basically applying the same tool that professional bodybuilders use for increasing the amount of weight gain that they're going to experience so in other words by going through this really aggressive short-term diet where you lose weight and fat too quickly Mm. you set yourself up for a very impressive rebound Mm. You're literally signing up for putting on more weight more f- like very quickly post that three week mini card exactly and that's then like it's really it's a one two punch because most people when they will go f- for a holiday yeah. they will drink more they will eat more they will move Movements. less and yes. it's just the perfect storm like you've literally first for a couple weeks you've primed your body yeah. to put on more fat on itself as soon as you stop dieting and then you put yourself into an environment where you're moving less sleeping less drinking more and eating more so it's like no wonder that like you you end up bouncing into a much much worse place mm. than where you started from before that So this is the problem. This is the problem with rapid fat loss. It sets you up for future weight gain. Mm. And that's it. That's it. And that's really demotivating for you to want to go and try another fat loss phase in the future because you're like, well, it just doesn't work on me. Something's wrong with my genetics, da-da-da-da-da. Like, I end up just getting back to where I was or worse off or xyz it doesn't work that's it that's, that's what you think it's the yo-yo pattern yeah it's it's the it's the yo-yo pattern that's really common and it's just another highlight like extreme approaches just <laughs> they just really don't work and this is why they don't work because physiologically your body will be primed to put on fat and psychologically your hunger hormones will and your body will try to make you eat more food which will have an impact on the circulating satiety hormones and hunger hormones so you will be driven to really actively seek out those calorie dense foods yeah i think one of the biggest things is like that you actually get more pleasure from food which kind of sounds actually a bit scary Mm. for people who are wanting to gain that control and not feel like they're such a slave to certain foods whether it's chocolate or chips or the snacks but if you continue going through these aggressive phases then you will kind of have more or have i guess have less control of those urges because food is going to be more pleasurable to you yeah so it's yeah. And it's that's actually a really good point about like how funny it is that like fitness comp- competitions are seen as like wow, you're if you're like you look absolutely shredded on stage, that means that you must be the healthiest and the fittest person in the world. No, like that's actually incredibly unhealthy and a very very high percentage of people who get absolutely like dick skin lean and to the level that they're ready to step on stage like they end up developing some problems with their just relationship with food and relationship with like pleasure signals coming from food and it becomes like this thing that's like it it really takes a really large portion in their life like mm-hmm. seeking the pleasure from from food not doesn't happen with everyone but happens with a really really high percentage of people, of people. Who do bodybuilding yes yeah we don't want the listener of the Lean and Strong Apart podcast to get to that. And this is like, this is this is when we're talking about getting to like single digit body fat, like super, super lean. This is, this is beyond what's considered to be like athletic, lean and like really sexy and just a good physique. This is when you go way beyond that. Mm. So with that out of the way, now that we understand what the problem is with too aggressive fat loss, Let's do a bit of a case study. Let's say that you're going to Europe in July. Let's talk about you. Yeah, I'm going to (laughs) Europe in July. 
Yay! Yeah, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I wish you could put me in your suitcase. Yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> Next sorry. year. <laughs> I'll get a big suitcase. Maybe we'll be able to squish you up in there. I'm getting flexible. Yeah, and you're pretty good at squish. I saw how you sent that plant to your mom and how you like packed it into the... Tetris that in there. Tetris into that, like that cardboard box yeah i'm pretty good I'm pretty very good very small very things very impressive spaces anyway so, so maybe you're going to europe maybe you're li- living in europe maybe you live in finland hello to all finnish listeners kiitos paljon kuuntelemist kiitos paljon i can't even <laughs> speak finnish on what fuck's sake <laughs> maybe you live in europe maybe you're not going to europe maybe you live in australia you're going to bali to escape the, the winter it. coldness here in victoria regardless you want to look better. You want your face to look a bit slimmer, your neck to look a bit slimmer, your arms to be a bit more toned, a bit tighter. your your abs to show up a little bit more, your butt to be a little bit more perky, perky. whatever it is. <laughs> you want to look better and you've got six to eight weeks to go. What to do? Well, based on this conversation, you probably already know that by going too aggressive, you're going to set yourself up for some long-term problems so you can still try to do something i'm not saying that if it's only six to eight weeks to go that you shouldn't try to do anything certainly you can still make a significant improvement in your physique but i would suggest starting today don't don't leave it any longer start today from this week you need to enter a calorie deficit so your body weight will start reducing and a rule for you to follow is to limit your weight loss to 1% of your body weight per week. Yeah. Okay? Point, so that's it. 0.5 to 1%. 0.5 to 1% is a healthy range. Yes, if you're losing weight quicker than that, you're number one losing a very high percentage of muscle mass, but number two, you are losing fat too aggressively and you are going to experience these negative side effects of an easier rebound after your diet finishes. So Mm -hmm. me, I weigh about 90 kilos. So for me, that would be about 500 to 1 kilo or 500 to 900 grams of body weight loss per week. Mm -hmm. You weigh about 60 kilos or slightly over. So that would be around about 300 to maximum 600 grams per week. And I think that's pretty doable. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. That, that's super doable. We see we see people do that all the time. It's yeah. super doable. But I think what you're saying is that it's it's actually if you lose fat or if you lose weight, if you lose 500 grams of weight per week for the next, let's say it's six weeks, that's three kilos of weight loss. And mm. hopefully you're following a really good training program and you're training really hard. And at that three kilos is going to be exclusively fat Mm -hmm. then that's going to make a big big difference three kilos of fat makes a huge difference in the way that your neck and your jaw and your face looks and everything my abs start popping a little bit more my bum lifts up a little bit that's it the wings the wings flap a little less in the wind triceps become more defined it's (laughs) amazing like people get really sad when they're like oh three kilos that's nothing but yeah if it is three kilos of body fat and you maintain your muscle mass because you're training well you're eating the right amount of macronutrients and you're sleeping well yeah. you will look vastly different exactly vastly different three kilos of pure like three kilos of f- muscle loss you know like if you don't put effort into that if you lose yes. three kilos on the scales yeah. but you don't focus on maximizing muscle mass Mm. maintenance you will look basically exactly the same like you just go from being an apple to looking like a little bit smaller apple what you want to do is go from an apple to an orange or a pear or whatever a banana (laughs) what's the sexiest fruit (laughs) obviously it's the eggplant or you know dragon fruit that's pretty Mm, cool pointy yeah (laughs) Anyway. Anyways, <laughs> number one, start today. Number two, cap your weight loss to maximum 1% of your body weight per week. Number three, you have to put effort into maintaining your fat loss on your holiday. Because even if you do cap it to 1%, your body is still going to be primed to putting that fat on really, really 
easily. And we recommend in our coaching practice and really the key for long-term maintenance of fat loss results is to do what it's called. It's a maintenance phase after you stop your dieting. You don't try to get more weight loss. You don't, but you don't want to go backwards either. You spend a period of time at your new body composition and you allow your body to accept that this is the new you. And these diets followed by maintenance phases and then after that deciding whether you want to try to focus on muscle mass gain or fat loss like that's really the key for making long-term changes to your physique mm. so you know you're going on a holiday like that obviously again these things like less sleeping potentially um, more drinking more food and and less movement like those things you're gonna have to manage them a little bit focus on getting your steps in every single day focus on getting some whole foods maybe you should try to eat a whole food breakfast at the hotel or whatever and then you'll have a bit more flexibility for lunch and dinner exactly right the... you gotta earn the flexibility there yeah yeah 100 percent. then that's you know that's the short-term solution so start today 1% max weight loss per week and focus on maintenance during the your okay. holiday. But really the other answer to this problem and the long-term solution is to next time think ahead. Give yourself at least 12 weeks in a calorie deficit so that you don't have to go so aggressively and it's not so bloody uncomfortable. You can, you know, that usually that first half of that diet when you set it up properly you will lose fat at a really really nice rate without it actually being too difficult yet it doesn't have to be that big of a stress as long as you give yourself that long enough runway so then it's really super easy to fit into your lifestyle you can have plenty of flexibility when it comes to eating the foods that you really enjoy drinking a little bit here and there as long as you're training properly you can totally fit that in but the less runway you allow yourself the less flexibility by definition you can build to your approach mm, totally yeah yeah, and I think it's really important to note, like you got to be, you got to think ahead as well, and like be realistic about about what you really want on holiday. Because I think a lot of people maybe say, yeah, no, nah, it's fine. Like I'm really happy with where I'm at. Like I don't, I don't mind. I'm just gonna go on holiday. But then like four weeks or three or two weeks beforehand, they're like, oh, like yeah. I want some changes. <laughs> what did you say about your client today? <laughs> say that again. Well, actually. So I asked this person, yeah, roughly about nine, oh, hmm, maybe like a good five to seven weeks ago now. Yeah. Do you want to make some changes for this end date? Because yeah. I know that this is an important part of your life. So she's graduating, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, that's personal. fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So this client's graduating. So she's graduating, and I knew that her graduation was coming up. And you know, we're getting, we're going to be getting photos taken. Your family's coming. Blah, da da da. You kind of want to feel good. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, okay, like now would be a great time to start, you know, a dieting phase. Um, and this individual said, no, no, it's fine. Like, I don't really mind. It's not a big deal to me. But then around two weeks ago, they said, okay, like, I'm not really happy with where I'm at. Um, I've started dieting. And unfortunately, it was, it was quite an aggressive approach. So we had to spend a little bit of time, like, unpacking some of the stuff again that we've worked on over the last two years. Yeah. Really pulling back some of the those layers because... A lot of those old behaviors and habits and like relationship with food and dieting, they're still there. Yeah. They're always still going to be there. And it's more just like coming in and infiltrating with the plan of attack, going back through the literature and um, having that, having, how do I, how do I put this? Like having the the evidence to kind of come in and whack some of the, the old stuff out of the way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So, unfortunately, that's kind of where we're at right now. We've got three weeks until the big day. And the 
it's still on a very like session by session basis. I need to come back in and give give other approaches and perspectives in in why the fast and aggressive approach is not only going to not really do much change right now it might but really realistically not that much but why that's going to continue to make the whole journey and process much more difficult after this date yeah exactly you have to have a longer term view about this thing because like what about the next holiday Mm. what about what like what what about next year what about like this health and fitness like and your your health like this is a life companion this is not just a project that you take it you know pick up and then put down when you feel like no 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 like there's always has to you you really do have to maintain this at, at some capacity in your life you know forever well that's it and that's always the best approach, just being able to have the daily, the weekly habits to maintain like a pretty, pretty comfortable, confident physique. Yeah. And then when you do want to put, tighten things up a little bit, obviously, yeah, and push it like you've you've looked ahead of time and you've kind of um, like you stay, you stay, you have integrity to that goal as well. Yeah, totally. So the the really the best way to actually do this and the way in which we do it in our leaner stronger coaching model is to look ahead even beyond that 12 week fat loss phase because during a 12 week fat loss phase you're not going to build much muscle mass and that's just the reality if we're focusing on fat loss we're focusing on fat loss and we're not really focusing on muscle building a lot of people get a bit disappointed sometimes if they don't already have a bit of muscle mass on their body and they go through a diet and then they end up like just kind of looking skinny because they didn't really have that underlying muscle mass it kind of me and ends up failing their expectations of what they were going to look like you need muscle mass you can't sculpt the pebble you need to have a bit of a boulder of muscle mass underneath there first so in our leaner, co- stronger coaching model, we break it down to 18 week blocks and your first 18 weeks with us, how that would unfold is that for the first six weeks, we don't put you on a diet, even though if your goal is to, I mean, if your goal is to look as best as you can in 18 weeks, I don't start with the diet, but instead we start with a diet preparation phase during which we focus on building muscle mass and more importantly, building critical habits around nutrition, lifestyle, sleep and stress management so that we are then ready for a smooth and as efficient 12 week fat loss phase as possible where your physique is really going to change absolutely dramatically. This is very different from a lot of other coaching programs out there where people are just happy to take you in for, you know, come in for a eight week blitzkrieg Mm -hmm. fat loss phase. After eight weeks of fat loss, we'll take the before after photos and we'll use them for further marketing to get more people Mm -hmm. into this thing that's only setting people up for failure the leaner stronger coaching program is vastly different it's an ongoing program we have people who then they're like okay well what happens after the 18 weeks then well of course after the first diet preparation phase and your 12-week diet what do you do after that well then you maintain we shift focus we put you on a muscle building focus program or whatever other thing physical quality that you want to focus on will then make the decision from from there and you know of course this can be reversed if your goal isn't to lose body fat some people are already in a place where they're pretty lean and you just need to build some muscle mass on you mm. of course this model can be tweaked but if your goal is to look as best as you can in 18 weeks this is the way to go about it mm. so to recap this episode to look your best in for your holiday in in eight weeks don't go too aggressively have a long-term view about it. That's absolute key. Start your cut right now. Don't delay it. You don't have much time at all. Cap your weight loss to 1% per week. And then you must focus 
on maintaining some level of physical activity and healthy eating practices on your holiday or you're very likely to rebound back. Next time, give yourself more of a runway. And if you've got something in the calendar next year or in the coming years where you want to really look the be in the be in the best shape that you've ever been in your life, now is the time to start working with us to work towards your goal with the Leaner Stronger Coaching Program. If you have any questions, send us a message on Instagram at Coach Puru, at Coach Teresa West. If you have any comments, we would love to hear them. If you know of someone who will benefit from this information, please do us a favor and share this episode with at least one other person. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and listening. Coach Teresa. Coach Teresa out, Coach Puru out. We'll see you in the next episode.